There's an ongoing rumour that more circuits will be added to Formula 1 in the coming years. But those are just hearsay, except for one they declared to be true. The Las Vegas Grand Prix is about to make a comeback next year, probably taking place during the Thanksgiving weekend for everyone to see. Formula 1 officially announced it and the race makes its return to Sin City since 1982. The drivers, they're all going crazy as they are looking forward to this. Drivers will make their pass to all those bright lights in this city's landmarks, including Caesar's Palace, the Bellagio, the Venetian, resident honey badger Daniel Ricciardo even joked about thinking of retiring but pushing it back for Las Vegas. Another race set is also to debut in Miami this May. There are some fans that are worried though. They think the drivers and their staff will all be overworked because of the new plans. Doesn't this make you question how tiring it is to transport cars per team? Formula 1 teams look so luxurious and glamorous, so let's have a sneak peek of their very intense efforts. 23 races, 22 countries, 5 continents, 10 months, back-to-back -back races, 50 tonnes of freight per team and 150,000 kilos of media equipment. Other than those, you also need to think of the cars, the spare parts, team employees and of course the drivers. Now there are three options in transporting these, by land, by sea or by air. They have to be extremely careful handling these or else the team would have the worst race week ever. As you know, air travel is the most expensive choice, yet it is the quickest choice of transportation. They only put the most critical and vital equipment here to ensure that they're all secured. Sea and land transportation are the cheaper choices, but the downside is they might take longer to move from one place to another. They are also the more environmentally friendly choices, so these are the team's first option all the time. Since Formula 1 vehicles are really expensive, they have to be treated delicately compared to other cars. You can't just place them in a normal cargo container. The vehicles have to have custom-made containers. They certainly need to build them or else us Formula 1 fans, we have nothing to look forward to. Aside from the custom containers, teams also have to provide trucks to carry the cars constructed with a raised and coiled platform. Now, if you aren't familiar with how the vehicles are carried, it is said that they have to be partially dismantled and put into the custom crates. When traveling by air or sea, they are fully stripped down too. The engine and transmission, mirrors, suspension elements, aerodynamic elements in the front and the back, and any other item which may be destroyed are required to be put in its own foam box to avoid the worst. When they travel to close places, like when they race in Europe, they can all easily reach them by car. Air travel is really safe for the further places. It's already not an easy procedure to move Formula 1 vehicles and equipment. What about the team and its drivers that have to prepare for that race day? You have to make them travel fast too. So as soon as one race finishes, everyone gets ready to move. Well, typically the packing process starts while the races are still ongoing. The Grand Prix are the last on their schedule per place. They're already done with the practice and qualifying, so it makes sense that they're already ready to leave. Like when you send a container to Canada, it will be packed up right after the race is complete and then sent to another place like Australia and so on and so on and so forth. When the season is done, everything is put back to the headquarters, most likely in Europe. Because of this dreaded COVID-19 virus, the timetable of shipping items has completely altered in 2021. The map wasn't complete. There was no event in China nor in Japan. The logistics were a bit different last year. This year, 2022, thank God, almost everything is back to normal. Aside from a few rules that have changed like a new weekend format, different tyre regulations and a lower budget cap level. Now, let's talk about the drivers. Travel restrictions from COVID proves that being in control during travel is important. Each company reportedly has their own private jets. Drivers Hamilton and Verstappen personally have their own jets. Perhaps that's what you get when you're a world champion. But really, even before COVID, 
they were already travelling like this. Schedules are oh so packed and you need safe and reliable vehicles to go all over the world. The drivers are the most crucial members of the team, so private jets allowed increased flexibility and privacy for the team. They aren't required to have private jets and they can choose to board commercial flights if they want to. Knowing how rich teams are, these are just nothing to them. If all these schedules for travel and transport aren't followed, teams may miss important schedules. Just like Haas, during the 2022 second pre-season test in Bahrain, everyone was already anticipating the arrival of equipment ahead of the three-day testing. Because of an unfortunate problem with the cargo plane, Haas cars and spares arrived late. The Haas Formula 1 team risked having a delayed start to the second pre-season Formula 1. They've already been through a lot this season and it's only just started. You can see how crucial being on time is in Formula 1.